workshop uh, of the quantumness of the heart props. And today uh, I'm going to talk about uh, COCOM and open quantum systems. And this uh, presentation is based on uh, uh, my pre uh, review paper, which is recently uh, accepted by Progress in Particle Nuclear Physics, and also based on a uh, conference proceedings written together with my uh, former PhD student, Takahiro uh, Miura. So everyone, as everyone knows, uh, in heavy ion collisions, the hydrodynamic uh, description is very successful for uh, light particles such as up, down, and strange quarks and gluons. And in the same system, the coconut is also coconut are also produced and plays the role of the impurity in a QGP. And this uh, coconut is recently uh, described by open quantum system uh, descriptions. And in this talk, uh, I will review the recent developments of this open quantum system application in a somewhat idealistic situation, uh, which means that the QGP is assumed to be uh, static and also homogeneous. And in the course of this idealization, we ignore several uh, effects, uh, which would be acceptable for a uh, larger heavy cork mass, uh, namely for the bottom onion. For example, we ignore the interaction between the uh, initially uncorrelated pairs, which is justified for bottom coke, uh, bottom onion. And also we ignore the effects of the non-static and inhomogeneous medium, which is uh, just for uh, simplicity. And I don't know how to in, uh, incorporate and improve this uh, effect. And we also ignore the heavy coke pair creation in the medium because this is suppressed by the Mol uh, Boltzmann factor. And the heavy coke annihilation in the medium is also uh, this, uh, neglected because this effect is suppressed by one of m square. And we also need to assume the boundary conditions of the uh, heavy coke uh, descriptions because uh, such as um, uh, initial condition and uh, freeze out uh, conditions. And the justification of this kind of uh, simple uh, assumption requires a little bit deeper understanding. Uh, for example, uh, for the initial condition of the coconia, we assume a singlet or octet wave packets, or the just a singlet vacuum uh, eigenfunctions, etc. And for the hydronization stage, we assume that uh, the evolution suddenly uh, freezes at some freeze out temperature like this. And, uh, and heavy coconia are uh, described by a uh, non uh, effective field theory called non relativistic QCD and uh, potential non relativistic QCD. And for the, uh, the NRQCD case, the heavy coconia are described by uh, two heavy coke, I mean, heavy coke pair, which are described by non relativistic Pauli spinners. For the case of the uh, PNR QCD, uh, the heavy coconia are described uh, as a color dipole, and the degree, the degree of freedom uh, of this case is the composite uh, field, like singular and octet. And in the open quantum system, the key quantity turns out to be the immediate uh, self energy of the static uh, coconium, which means that uh, mass is finitely heavy. And for the case of the uh, potential energy CD uh, description, the immediate self energy is uh, this given by the local correlation functions in the QGP and is parameterized by something like a thermal dipole uh, self energy coefficient and also heavy coke momentum diffusion constant. And for the case of the uh, non relativistic QCD description, uh, the immediate self energy is given by non local correlation functions in the QGP and uh, is uh, compactly summarized by complex potential. So, using the open quantum system approach, we can learn how these quantities determine the coconium evolution, which, we, which uh, in turn tell us. Uh, what can we learn from the experiment? And in this talk, uh, I will 
first I'll talk about the coconia as coconium as an open quantum system in the QGP. And the second part uh, is about the simulation of the link blood equation uh, from non-relativistic QCD. So the first part, first part here. And to discuss the possible quantum effects, uh, let's start from the uh, classical kinetic description for the heavy coke pair. One picture is that a heavy coke and anti coke are just described by classical particles. And in this case, the heavy coconia are uh, just the two Brownian particles uh, in the QGP um, interacting with each other by screen potential. Another picture is that uh, in another picture, uh, the coconium is um, described like by a classical molecule and unbound pairs are just a classical particles. And this kind of description is um, better when the uh, time scale of the uh, reaction, which is uh, absorption or emission of the gluon, this kind of time scale is uh, longer, more or less longer than the orbital period of the uh, uh, coconut bound state. And in this case, the dynamical processes are the excitation of the uh, molecule to unbound pair by a gluon absorption, and also the collision of a process of uh, the um, uh, unbound pair, and also the excitation process of the unbound pair into the uh, molecule by gluon emission. Now, uh, let's see, let us now introduce the quantum effect by the quantum uh, coconium wave function. And since the collisions, uh, collisions with the momentum transfer Q is like a, a position detection process with the resolution scale of the one over Q, a nice picture would be that the collisions uh, induce a decoherence and a classicalization. And when the decoherent, uh, when, when the uh, wave function size is much larger than this uh, resolution scale, the decoherence proceeds uh, very rapidly and the classicalization also takes place very rapidly. But this is not the case for the coconium in the Coulomb potential. In the case of the uh, coconium in the Coulomb potential, the wave function is typically estimated by one over m alpha. And this quantity is usually much, much smaller than one over temperature scale, which is the typical resolution scale of the uh, QGP medium. So <clears throat> um, once the a singlet um, bound state is excited to octet and the octet repels each other and the its wave function gets larger, even though that happens, uh, the decoherence proceeds uh, slowly because uh, the wave function size is much, much smaller than the a resolution scale, something like this. And an important question is that how long does it take for the medium to distinguish uh, different uh, classical trajectories like this? Um, and this is the uh, important because this is the time scale uh, that allows a classical description. The open quantum system um, description enables us to introduce the quantum, the quantum effects uh, of this kind. And before going into the uh, too much detail uh, of the open quantum system of ligation, let me briefly touch on the history. Uh, before the application of open quantum system, the key observations were made by uh, looking at the JPSI melting, JPSI mass shift, or JPSI spectra function. And all these are uh, nice uh, quantities, but um, the relation to the dynamical evolution of the coconium is not very much obvious. And about a decade ago, these authors uh, discovered the complex potential uh, the potential has the imaginary part. And this uh, quantity is uh, directly related to the dynamical evolution of the coconut. Personally, I was very confused actually by the non-unitary evolution of, by this uh, complex potential, uh, which led me to take a system environment approach, uh, namely the open quantum system approach. There are several works on the time evolution equations using the open quantum system technique. 
uh, for example, a stochastic potential, in blood equations, and generalized Langevin equation, and a couple of uh, Boltzmann equations. But hereafter, uh, I will follow the uh, dis descriptions uh, given in my review. So let us start from the minimum basics of the open quantum system. In the open quantum system, the total system is assumed to be the direct product of the uh, system Hilbert space and the environment uh, Hilbert space. And they are interacting with each other through the um, interact in interaction with Hamiltonian. And in our case, the system is, of course, the coconium, and the environment is the QGP. The open quantum, uh, in the op uh, what we do in the open quantum system uh, approach is uh, first derive a master equation of this uh, reduced density matrix, which is uh, given by tracing out uh, the uh, environmental sector uh, from the total density matrix. And in the case of the, uh, when, when the evolution is Markovian and preserves the positivity and the probability of the reduced density matrix, uh, it is known from the already in 1970s that the master equation must be written in terms of this Lindblad equation of this form. And the specific form and the numbers of the Lindblad operators, uh, LKs, uh, depends on the system of your choice. And this linked blood equation can also be written in terms of the sum of this uh, non emission uh, evolution plus the transition and scattering processes. And this non emission uh, uh, effective Hamiltonian here is given by the system Ham Hamiltonian plus the uh, self energy, uh, in medium self energy. Uh, corrections, including the imaginary part of the self-energy. So this is the, uh, usually the non-emission Hamiltonian. So we know that the evolution equation must be written in the link blood form, but how do we get this link blood equation from the microscopic theory? In general, it is possible uh, only when the system environment coupling is uh, weak. And using the uh, well-known approximation called the Bohr-Markov approximation, the uh, time evolution equation for the reduced density matrix is written in this kind of uh, form. And here, the, uh, this one is the environmental correlation functions. And this equation is already very close to the link blood equation, but uh, there's a, a few differences, such as here, the time is not t, but t minus s. And we have to perform this uh, S integration. And to, for, to, to perform this uh, S integration, uh, we need to assume the time scale hierarchy. And in this, in our work here, uh, let us assume uh, quantum Brownian uh, regime. This is uh, essentially meaning that the time scale for the system is uh, slow compared to the time scale of the uh, environment. And in this uh, setup, uh, we can perform the derivative expansion for this uh, uh, quantities here and here by derivative expansion like this. And uh, after uh, S integration, we get this kind of form for the link blood uh, operators. And this uh, link blood operator uh, comes from the uh, leading order and the next to leading order in the derivative expansion. But uh, both terms are, are necessary because the coefficients of these uh, two uh, terms are related by the fluctuation dissipation theorem, or namely the uh, KMS condition for the environmental correlation function, like here. And let us see the con whether the condition of the uh, this derivative expansion is satisfied for the coconium. So in the case of the coconium, the system time scale is typically estimated by the one of, uh, uh, inverse of the uh, binding, Coulombic binding energy, which is estimated like this. And this uh, time scale is, must be uh, much larger than the uh, correlation time of the uh, environment, which we uh, assume this kind of form. 
And without 2pi, this uh, hierarchy is a little bit subtle, but uh, let us assume that the time scale here is false and we can adopt a quantum Brownian re uh, motion regime. So now we have the formula. So let us apply this formula for the uh, link blood equation to uh, obtain the, uh, for the case of the PNRQCD. In the case of the PNRQCD, the system and environment uh, interaction is given by a, a color dipole interaction, which is essentially a R dot GE interaction. But uh, due to the uh, non abelian nature of the, um, due, due to non abelian nature, it has a richer structure like here. Uh, it has a singlet to octet uh, transitions and and, the other, and also the octet to singlet transition and also octet octet transitions. And when a, <coughs> a dipole side is small, we can perform a gauge invariant and non-perturbative expansion uh, that, and whose expansion coefficients are given by uh, physical quantities. For example, uh, the self energy of the uh, self energy is uh, given by this uh, kind of form. It is proportional to some complex coefficient times r square times the uh, singlet and octet uh, projection operators. And this uh, this is a leading order, but there is some uh, higher order terms coming from derivative expansion and also small r expansion. And for the case of the uh, Lindblad uh, operator, it is proportional to the square root of some co uh, transport coefficient, same as here, and times uh, uh, R and the color transition processes. And there is also corrections coming from derivative expansion and also smaller expansion. <coughs> and here, this R and kappa, uh, not R, uh, gamma and kappa are. Uh, thermal dipole self energy coefficient and heavy coke momentum diffusion constant, respectively. And the gamma uses the median mass shift uh, of the coconia, and the kappa induces the uh, in medium width of the coconia. In the uh, numerical implementation, um, it is a very important to reduce the number of the link blood operators. So let's do that now. So in the original um, uh, derivation of the link blood operators, we have uh, 24 of them uh, coming from three from the spatial directions and eight from the uh, number of the colors of the exchange gluons. But uh, when we do not distinguish the uh, different octet states and perform the singlet and octet projections, then the number is reduced to nine, coming from three spatial directions and three color processes, uh, like, such as singlet to octet process and octet to singlet process and octet to octet uh, scattering process. And we can further reduce the number of the linked blood operators using the uh, very nice property of this dipole transition, which is uh, very suited to go to the angular momentum basis. And if we do not distinguish the different uh, Ms for fixed L for some angular momentum L, then <coughs> and we can perform the angular momentum projection and then the number of the, the uh, Lindblad blood operator is reduced to six. And three coming from the color transition, three types of the color transitions and two coming from the lower uh, lower ring and raising uh, operators in the uh, angular momentum ladder. And here note that this uh, L time, uh, how to say, that yeah, this kind of process is prohibited by the uh, parity selection rule. Now let's turn to the NRQCD and apply the formula uh, for the link the Lindblad equation of the NRQCD. And in this case, the system environment interaction is given by uh, color electric interaction of this form. And this is uh, written in terms of the uh, momentum shift operator like this times the uh, mode amplitude. 
here. And um, applying the formula, we get uh, the result. The self energy is given by this kind of form. Uh, this is a leading order term, and we have corrections coming from the derivative and the perturbative, perturbative expansions. And here, V uh, is given by this uh, device screen potential, and D uh, uh, comes from the uh, Landau dumping uh, processes. For well, the case of the link blood operators, this is proportional to the uh, momentum shift operator times some uh, coefficient. And so this uh, link blood operator describes the process of the uh, scattering with momentum transfer K. And this uh, process uh, takes place with a rate proportional to the uh, D, D of K. And also uh, using this uh, uh, self energy, uh, in medium self energy, we can uh, obtain a singlet uh, complex potential uh, in this kind of form. And this tells you that the, actually the singlet uh, complex potential contains the enough information to construct the link blood, operate, link blood equations uh, from the energy CD. Now let us take the classical limit uh, to see whether we get what we uh, expected from the beginning. And indeed, we get something a little different. And let us start from the kinetics. So kinetics uh, is just, uh, essentially it is uh, written by the, uh, it is described, uh, it is expressed by the Langevin equation, but the noise for the uh, heavy cork and another heavy cork are correlated. And this is a very interesting uh, difference. And this is uh, for the singlet. Uh, so this Q is a uh, noise for the heavy cock and QC is a noise for the anti-heavy cock. And uh, for the singlet pairs, the noise strength is given by this, but th this noise is correlated between the heavy cock and the under heavy cock. And an octet pair is uh, also uh, have a similar structure and the same strength of the noise here, but the correlation is, uh, the sign of the correlation is uh, opposite. And the sign, uh, this um, comes from the difference of the charges. And for, for example, for the singlet case, the random force, random force acts uh, oppositely. Um, because the singlet uh, pair contains uh, opposite charges. And in the case of the oct octet, uh, the random forces acts in the same direction. And this is uh, due to the fact that octet is essentially uh, the same charges. And note that uh, for P and RQCD, this function uh, D is essentially a uh, constant minus this kappa R square. So, uh, if we take the second order, uh, second order derivative, uh, this um, correlation between the heavy coke and under heavy coke does not decay, and it, yeah, it remains uh, constant. And for the case of the color, there is uh, also a, a color transi transition process uh, given by this kind of rates. So the first one is uh, the rate from, from from the singlet to octet, and the second one is the rate from the octet to singlet. And I think if we take the ratio of these uh, rates, we obtain this kind of uh, number or how to say, yeah, equation. And this is uh, uh, approximately, uh, this is approximated by this uh, Boltzmann, what's it, yeah, Boltzmann, uh, yeah, this, this kind of uh, function. And this means that approximate detail balance is satisfied between the singlet and octet. So uh, if we derive the classical picture from the link, link blood equation, what we we'll get is something like this. So we have uh, two heavy coke, um, I mean, heavy coke and a heavy coke pair. Um, they are undergoing the Brownian motion, uh, interacting through the screen potential. But uh, their noise are somehow correlated, and their color uh, state is some, uh, 
flipping from singlet to octet or octet to state, uh, singlet uh, from time to time. Well, the first part is over, and now let's move on to this uh, second part, uh, the simulation of the lean blood equation. And most simulations uh, so far uh, use the stochastic unraveling method, uh, which I uh, will discuss uh, later. And in the here, this table uh, compares the NRQCD and PNRQCD uh, lean blood equation. And let's look at this uh, third uh, line. The simulation cost of the NRQCD is much, much heavier than the PNRQCD because the number of the linked blood operators for the NRQCD is, a uh, PNRQCD is only a few, six or something, but uh, the number of the linked blood operators for the NRQCD is uh, effect, essentially it is infinite. So this is uh, heavier. And there have, there have been uh, lots of um, numerical simulations uh, of the linked blood op uh, equations but let me uh, introduce my latest uh, calculation from here. In the simulation, so let me uh, explain how we, uh, we can simulate this uh, linear blood equation effectively. And in the simulations, uh, most people use the stochastic unraveling uh, uh, of the reduced density matrix, which means that we prepare or pro uh, we prepare or let's say we produce a mixed state wave function ensemble by uh, using the, the stochastic processes. And taking this kind of ensemble average, uh, we can recover the um, reduced density matrix uh, evolved by the linear blood equation. And in our simulation, we adopt the method called uh, quantum state diffusion. And there is also another famous method, method called quantum jump, uh, which will be I think uh, covered by Nora Stop or Michael Stop tomorrow. So let me uh, explain the method of quantum state diffusion method. This uh, method is essentially the, a nonlinear stochastic equation with the complex white noises. The white noises uh, uh, satisfy this kind of statistical properties. And we update the wave function by this kind of uh, process equation. So the first term here is a, looks a little bit complicated, but this is actually uh, this actually gives you the close closest pure state to the linked blood equation, because the linked blood evolution uh, will give you uh, will uh, say increase the entropy, so it, it will introduce mixed mixed state, mixed state. But this uh, evolution part will give you the closest pure state to the linked blood evolution. Uh, sometimes people call this kind of state as a pointer state. And plus we have uh, this additional um, uh, term, which will introduce a mixed state uh, ensemble. And written uh, more uh, specifically, uh, we have we need to solve this kind of uh, equation, and this part we have uh, non emission uh, non emission evolution plus this um, nonlinear term in the uh, wave function. So this is a nonlinear Schrodinger equation plus uh, noise. But this evolution does not um, um, preserve the norm, so we have to normalize the updated wave function to get the normalized uh, wave function and you repeat the process to get the evolution equation. So once we know the method, uh, let us apply this method to the uh, wind blood evolution for the NRQCD. But we have to start from the modeling of the uh, lean, lean blood uh, equation and from by using the singlet uh, complex potential. So as I said, the uh, sing, singlet complex potential contain this kind of, uh, uh, it takes this kind of form. And 
the real part is uh, we expect the screening here. And the uh, imaginary part, we expect this kind of function. But this means that this function uh, behaves like this. So it starts from 0 and reach some uh, constant at larger distances. And there is actually a lattice calculation for the complex potential uh, using the uh, thermal Wilson loop. And the left and right panel shows this uh, result for the right, uh, real part of the real part and the imaginary part of the potential. And the real part looks like a device screen potential, and the, but the imaginary part um, suffer from the large error bars, errors at longer distance, larger distances. So we cannot uh, rely on the uh, lattice uh, result to get this kind of function d of r. So we have to uh, instead model the complex potential. And here is the uh, model, model we adopted. So real part is just uh, some parameterization of the device screen potential. And the imaginary part, d, uh, is modeled by the uh, Gaussian function. And since this uh, Gaussian, dump, Gaussian is dumped by the size of uh, one of a temperature, this means that the color resolution scale of the QGP is about one of a temperature. And we uh, put uh, the temperature to be the uh, 10th of the heavy cock mass here. And from here, uh, I, I will show the time evolution uh, of the reduced density matrix of the, uh, in the singlet and octet sectors. So first we have uh, initial condition is this uh, singlet uh, ground state. Uh, sorry, I didn't mention, but this simulation, simulation is uh, for the one dimensional case. And this uh, initial condition is this singlet ground state. And at some time, after some time, um, the octet sector is excited by the dipole ex, uh, excitation. And this uh, the coherence uh, takes place in the octet sectors and continues. And at some point, we start to see um, the de excitation to the singlet sectors. And after more time, we get. Uh, uh, after more time, uh, we we get uh, we reach the some kind of steady state. But just from these figures, we cannot judge whether the system is equilibrated or not. So here we look at the time evolution of the eigenstate occupation. Um, yeah, uh, in the left panel, and this left panel. Uh, show the evolution of the eigenstate occupation starting from different uh, initial condition. And the uh, eigenstate plotted here is the ground state and the first excited state. So this uh, red one is the um, ground state occupation and the blue one is the first excited state. And initial condition is, one of the initial condition is the ground state and the other simulation, the initial condition is the first excited state. And <clears throat> we see that um, the occupation number is more or less independent of the uh, initial condition at some uh, later time stage here. So we ask, let's see, we, yeah, we, we judge that a steady state is, uh, is reached at uh, this uh, latest uh, latest time and calculate the eigenstate occupation of in the in this steady state uh, for the lowest maybe 20 levels or something and this uh, right panel is the uh, shows the occupation number time uh, um, versus the uh, eigen energy and this shows that this uh, distribution is close to the Boltzmann um, distribution with the uh, environmental temperature. So this fitted temperature is about uh, 0.101 and this environmental temperature is 0.1. So this is pretty close. And finally, uh, let's, uh, let's see the role of the dissipation 
which is uh, introduced by the next leading order term in the derivative expansion. So here, uh, evolution of the eigenstate occupation uh, for the leading order derivative expansion is plotted and compared with the, our previous calculation. So the greenish one is the result without the dissipation and the red and blue lines are the simulation with the uh, dissipative NLO term. And from this figure, we can see that without the dissipation, uh, all the states get uh, equally occupied at uh, uh, very late times. And uh, furthermore, the dissipation is uh, not uh, negligible from uh, early time. And <clears throat> uh, we need to uh, observe that the, both the initial wave function, which is the singlet um, bound state, and also the near thermal wave packets, both of them are, are small states. And since this, the coherence is uh, not very effective for a localized, bounce, localized state, uh, we need to take on down, we need to take account of the uh, <coughs> heavy coax motion during this uh, the coherence process. And this is, uh, will introduce the uh, inter uh, dissipation. So now uh, let's, let me summarize my talk. Uh, Coconium Lindblad equations carry the information of the QGP, QGP and for the case of PNRQCD, it uh, contains information of the uh, local coefficients co like gamma and kappa. And for the case of NRQCD, it is parameterized by the complex potential. But we have to admit that the quokonium Lindblad blood equation is uh, yet to be uh, complete. Uh, PNRQCD uh, case, it is valid in non-perturbative regime, um, which is very nice, but it is uh, valid uh, only in the dipole limit. For the case of NRQCD, uh, it is valid uh, only in the weak coupling regime, so this is not good, but it can be modeled for a larger size uh, quantum state. And also for the temperature below 0.2 GeV, maybe the quantum Brownian regime is to hold. And this, it, it, which uh, comes from the observation that the QGP correlation time gets longer at lower temperature and become comparable to the orbital period of the uh, coconut state. And <clears throat> uh, simulation of the link blood equation is now uh, starting. Uh, for example, the PNRQCD, the phenom phenomenological application is uh, very active. And the NRQCD case, um, the equilibration is um, achieved by uh, we, we observe that the equilibration is achieved by balancing the, the coherence and the dissipation uh, processes. And I think we need to check uh, the validity of the dipole approximation of the PNR QCD because this is a very, what's, how to say, very nice description and powerful and uh, larger applicability, but we need to check its weak, weak point, uh, the validity of the dipole, dipole approximation. And um, yeah, the simulation of the Lindblad equation using quantum computer may, may be possible. I'm not very much sure, but yeah. And let me finally say a few words about initial and final freeze out uh, processes. So, so the initial condition, um, about the initial condition and <clears throat> The complete positivity, which is an essential factor to derive the link blood equation, this comes from the uh, uh, uncorrelated initial condition. And I ha we have to know when is it for the case of the coconium in the heavy ion collisions. When can we uh, assume this kind of initial density, total initial density matrix for the case of heavy coke uh, pair production in the heavy ion collisions? Is it the time scale of the one over m, which is pair creation time, or one over m alpha square, which is a formation time, or the tau hydro, which is a thermalization time of the medium? We do not know uh, when it was it. And also, uh, if we if the initial condition uh, uh, of this uh, coconium 
uh, consists mainly from the consists mainly of the octet wave bucket. The uh, traditional meaning of the RAA, which means a survival, which is more or less a survival survival probability, and this this relation may cease to hold uh, when the initial condition is mostly docted. And finally, the freeze out process. Uh, we usually take the project. We usually project uh, the wave function to the singlet uh, eigen function. But is this enough or not? Uh, do we need to consider the octet component in the um, coconut state or not? Yeah. So this is uh, my uh, comment on the uh, open questions on the initial and finite uh, uh, final conditions. So that's all. Uh, thank you very much. Thank you very much, uh, Yuki Now for a very nice talk. Uh, I see uh, Nora and raise her hand. So can you unmute yourself? Yes, right. Thanks a lot for this very nice uh, inspirational talk, uh, Yuki Now. I have uh, several questions. So let me start. First of all, you were mentioning a static medium. What do you mean with a static medium? Oh, yeah, it means the temperature is constant. I mean, the sun. It's varying uh, slowly. Yeah, but uh, where is it? Yeah, this one, yeah. So static, it doesn't expand or it doesn't, uh, yeah, it doesn't expand and it is in the equilibrium. So the temperature does not change. Of course, the temperature, if the temperature changes slow, we can uh, more or less uh, simulate or introduce, in, include that effect by the time dependent coefficient for the Lindblad equation, but uh, I, I do not know whether there is additional effect uh, coming from this dynamical medium. So in your, in your treatment, the temperature is always the same from the beginning to the end? I mean, my simulation is uh, that, and I mean, I'm, I'm, my, my derivation of the Lindblad equation assumes that, at least. So the temperature is never changing from 400 to 250 or 150. But, yeah. but that, you, that is an assumption for the derivation of the Lindblad equation, but you can, of course, use that derived Lindblad equation for the um, time dependent temperature for the simulation, right? Well, I was expecting that the temperature was changing. Uh, also, when you uh, start, uh, I have several questions on, on relativistic QCD. I think that you work uh, in the, when you look only the screening because you are not considering any other effects, uh, you are only looking at screening. Then I mm -hmm. think that you are in the region in which T, the temperature is bigger than the inverse radius that should be of order MD. Otherwise you wouldn't have uh, that line potential that you are using. So in principle, you always work with this large temperature. The temperature is much bigger than your radius. That's your assumption. Temperature is bigger. Temperature. Because that's the only re regime in which you get uh, that potential that you use. Uh huh. I mean, um, if you are, so, so uh, let me, This one, right? So you're saying this hierarchy. And in the case of NRQCD, of course, uh, uh, bind, yeah, this is the no. temperature. I mean, no, no, this is, uh, this would be that uh, uh, is a reverse scale. It would be that the temperature is smaller than. Uh, 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 than M alpha. But since you are assuming the screening regime, and the potential is screened when R is R minus one is of order MD. And then you would assume that the temperature is bigger than M alpha in general when you do this kind of calculation. When yeah, yeah. Coulomb okay. potential is different. The temperature in well, in the case in which we have a Coulomb potential, it's another story. We have the Coulomb potential, then the radius is bigger than the temperature, which is what we do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so yeah, as I said, this 
this kind of derivation, um, yeah, relies on the HDL effective theory that, um, yeah, this, strictly speaking, this description is valid at this yeah, scale. We agree, we agree, we agree. And then the temperature should be bigger. And then uh, the other thing is that uh, I would like to understand uh, why you are using non statistical CD. You are saying that you, you don't need to reduce to small radius, uh, but I mean, uh, the potential, uh, strictly speaking, is not defined in non statistical CD because in non statistical CD, you have integrated out only the scale of the mass and then you have retardation effects. So you don't have a clear definition of the potential. I think that you uh, do something in the sense that you get only the, this uh, uh, a zero potential in, uh -huh. in uh, some gauge, uh, and then you substitute, you contract it, and then you, you substitute it with uh, the, the propagator with a thermal mass. But um, it's, uh, I mean, no statistical CD is not the framework appropriate to derive a potential. In fact, this result has been obtained in PNR CD when looking for the potential. So wh why in using a theory that is not defining a potential to do a potential calculation? Um, <clears throat> um, let me see. So, so you say that there is some degrees of freedom not integrated out in the NRQCD, right? But yes, yes, yes. When you do this procedure tracing out the environment, this means uh, we have to trace out or integrate over these uh, gluons at any scale, right? So uh, well, uh, no, because there are the gluons that gives the binding, the retardation effect in in this in the subsystem. They are uh, the, the the thing uh, that are typical of the bound system, so they are in the subsystem. So it's, it's not the, the 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 environment is T T T T T G T T T O G T. Yeah, but it's never uh, giving you M alpha square, M alpha square, and D square. Because that's typical of the bond state. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but okay. Well, that's that's uh, yeah. In, uh, we need discuss yeah later. Yeah, we can discuss more later. For sure, there is more a lot of time for discussion. I uh, then I have a, a quick question because I want also to leave it to the other uh, time to think. So for what concerns dissipation, so you, you, you are saying that one would need to consider as a correction in E over T. And in our recent work, I think that Mike will speak about that, we did that. And then you were uh, showing those beautiful plots of the states so that with no dissipation all states get occupied, but also, this may be for discussion later, but I can tell you that what we get uh, also with dissipation, because we are now considering E over T correlation, S2 leading correlation in the expansion of the energy over T, we don't get much difference from what uh, we got before. So we can discuss this uh, later. And uh, um, why are you calling as a cap and gamma local coefficient? It's given by the um, electric color electric, color electric correlator at the same point, right? Uh, no, the other time is different. Time is different, yeah. Yeah, so I'm- They are non-local. I'm saying it's, it's just a matter of wording, but we yeah. are calling them non-local, so that's- Non-local in space at <laughs> uh, time. Yeah, yeah, they're local in, spa in, 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 uh, in space, right. So what is the role of the center of mass in your, um, your description? The center of mass of the particle, do you treat it? Is that thermalized as it a rule in your description? Um, yeah, that's a good point. And center of mass is uh, when, when we, um, yeah, so at the level of the derivation of this link blood equation, we not, we, we have uh, center of mass degrees of freedom for the coconium, but uh, when we, and do the simulation, we integrate out the center of mass, uh, center, of, yeah, center of mass momentum. And uh, that requires a little bit of assumption. This is not a non-trivial uh, procedure. It's, it's a bit technical, so I cannot explain. Ah, so that's perhaps is something good to discuss uh, later because that's something very interesting. Uh, 
Okay, the, the role of the center remarks in all this. So I would be interested in knowing. Last, my question, why you are saying that we should uh, project on the outlet when we are looking at the singlet in the last, in the la your slides, uh, last slides? Can you clarify, please? Um, the coconut contains um, octet, octet, uh, octet channel, right? Sure, uh, sure. With a higher box. Firefox state or something. Yeah. And do we need to take account of that uh, effect when we calculate, for example, to obtain uh, the number of the J psi or epsilon? In your statistic OCD, you mean because you are not in PNR CD, because in PNR CD, you don't need that. Perhaps in all artistic OCD, okay? When you write down the state in uh, all artistic OCD, of course, at order view, you have a noted component. Depends on oh, what you are doing. Oh, I didn't know that. So PNRPC does not contain the octet component? There is an octet as an intermediate, uh, as an independent degree. Yeah. Of and there are all the interaction vertices. So everything is uh, explicit. Uh, so you don't need, uh, when you write down uh, the, the wave function as 11 all artistic OCD, you have these components. This is... Uh, is realizing the NRCD, but it's a level of uh, the, the, the um, uh, Feynman rules, so, so you don't need to think about that mm -hmm. in NRCD. Okay. Okay, thanks so much. Yeah, thank you. Okay, okay. I think uh, ah, uh, Michael also raised his, his hand. So. Yeah, yeah, just to follow up to the discussion. So, so Nora, I mean, you could have right an octet surviving, and then after the freeze out, the octet then radiates a gluon and becomes a singlet again, right? Sim similar to what happens in in PP production, right? I think. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Good. yeah. Okay. Just a comment. Okay. Yeah. Well, but as a freeze out, you freeze. And then you have a long, you have other process. It frees out the, the gluon as a T is gone, the medium is gone. And then you have the, the, the process that's low, sure. You emit uh, gluons and uh, electric dipole and magnetic dipole transition. You have all that, but they are slow and another, uh, yeah, sure. I mean, we said that. Yeah, no? from my because experience. And from the cross section, yeah. I agree. I don't think it's practically. Um, because the, the octets separate very quickly in the in the plasma and they get highly suppressed. They, they'll be be super large, a little overlap with the, the singlet in the end. But you know, it's it's a very good thing to consider still. Okay. Okay. I okay. I actually have a a short question. So in page twenty, what is M? Is the or does this M contains information about the binding energy or is only the mass of uh, the heavy quark? And, and what do you use M? The M? Yes, what is this mass? Is it the mass of the total quarkonium or the mass of oh, this the... is uh, just the heavy quark mass used in the simulation. Okay. It's about 4.8 oh. GB or something for the bottom one. Yes, I'm, I'm, I'm a little bit surprised of this behavior because uh, actually the, I would say that the, your, and the questions that you're using, they don't know about the mass of the quark. They only know about the binding energy, right? Because the, the mass only enters in the kinetic energy in a sense. Um, well, The Lindblad operator is given by the derivative expansion like this, right? Yes. So this con this part contains uh, one over m. Um, how to say? It. So, for example, yes. in the case of the yeah. NRQC, this is r. So r dot is the velocities and m over p, uh, p over m. Yes, but. I would say that this will give you information about the in the difference in kinetic energy, but not in the on the mass of the heavy quark directly. Oh yeah, yeah. Yes. I don't know. I mean, uh, what is it? Good question. So heavy quark mass is just a rest mass and doesn't 
doing yes, both. because in, in principle, I mean, it's a non relativistic equation, so you could uh, define the zero of energies at a different scale, and then you wouldn't know about the mass. Mm -hmm. Okay, yes, okay. And yes. So, why were we put it's just uh, for the dimensional dimensionality? Yeah. Okay, no, it's okay. So it's just something that seems surprising to me. Okay, that's it. Um, okay, and now I have ah, Michael raised his hand again, or is this the the same question as before, or is it? Ah, no, no, it's yeah. Okay, so I don't New see new comment or question related to this slide. So uh, uh, you show on the next slide with the twenty one that you know including. Mm -hmm. um, the dissipation effects change the early time behavior. But if we go back to 20, right, um, the previous slide, the, the scale where they start to, you know, come together, which is around 3000 on your plot, right? Um, at least for the S wave state that if you do the math, right, this is like 130 Fermi over C or something. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's a, uh, yeah, it's a very long time compared to the heavy ion. Yeah, uh, QGP. But but the next slide, I'm just to emphasize the point, does show that it's relevant on the time scale because you can see the green and the red are, are very different. <laughs> in, in this one? Yes. Yeah, this is, I think, uh, I think, uh, as Nora said, your new simulation does not see much difference between these two effects, right? At the early term, uh, early time. I, 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 when we include the next leading order terms in the binding energy over temperature, which I'll show tomorrow, we see mm -hmm. similar effect. Yes, I don't know if it's this, you know, as large, but we do see a enhancement of the survival probability. Yes. You mean that you only get the reduction, right? Yeah, it looks similar to what you see. You go from oh. well, yeah, we get a reduction in the. Oh, without the <laughs> RAA goes up. <laughs> goes up with the dissipation. Yes. But slightly, right? Well, um, no, no. Huh? Oh, okay. Well, well. I'll show some preliminary results tomorrow. I would say that it's at least uh -huh. for a central collision, it's a it's a thirty percent enhancement, roughly. Uh -huh. Yeah, that that is. I think at least for the early time behavior, that is easily estimated from the. Uh, yeah, yeah. I, I agree. Yeah. Okay. The, the, okay. the light is, 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 is only that the occupation of the states is not changed as far as we see. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I think. Okay, thank you. Better. Yeah. Thank. You. Okay. Uh, okay. I think we can thank uh, uh, Yuki now again for a very nice talk and for. Being, yeah, thank you. Yes, being able to give it this talk so so late in the evening. So and I think it's okay, it's quarter past four. So we uh, don't have time for, for the break. So I think we, we can start one. Ah yes, we can 15 minutes, right? Okay, so well, we start again in in 15 minutes. So see you later.